Let's pretend you're a pediatrician who's collected data on children's growth and you want to graph it. First thing you need to do is draw your axes. Draw them straight and at a right angle. If you don't have a ruler, use the edge of your piece of paper. On each axis, place hatch marks out from where the axes meet. It doesn't matter how many, just make sure they're evenly spaced. Next, you'll need to label those axes. Normally, the x-axis displays the independent variable, and the y-axis shows the dependent variable. Your data table contains two variables, a child's age and height. To figure out which of those variables is dependent and which one is independent, ask yourself, does one variable change because of the other variable? If so, it means that the one variable is changing depending on the other one, making it a dependent variable and the other variable your independent variable. So in the case of our data table, we'll ask, can someone's age change because of their height? Your gut reaction should be no. Someone's age does not change because they grow taller. If that were true, basketball players would be some of the oldest people on the planet, which is nonsense because being tall doesn't make you old. So let's ask ourselves the opposite question. Can someone's height change because of their age? In this case, yes. Kids can grow taller because they get older. This means that height depends on age. Therefore, height must be our dependent variable, and age is our independent variable. So let's label those. Age on the x-axis and height on the y-axis. Be sure to include the units for each. Now we can make a simple title. The effect of our independent variable upon our dependent variable. In this case, the effect of age on height. A lot of scientists will abbreviate this to simply age versus height. Next, we need to number our axes. The first number should always be the same, zero. But your next question is, what should you count by? Ones, twos, threes, or some larger number? Well, since we're currently looking at the age axis, let's find the largest age in our data table. In this case, it's 15. This means when we number the age axis, you're going to need to count up by a number that will reach at least 15. In this case, if you count by ones, you'll have enough space on your axis to reach 15 and even go a little beyond. Do the same for the other variable. In this case, you know that the tallest height in your data table is 62 inches, which means that your height axis is going to need to count up to at least 62. If you count up by ones, you won't make it to 62. Counting by twos won't work either. In fact, it isn't until you count by fives that you reach past 62. So I'll add those in. Now, at last we get to plot our data points into the graph. The first point you're plotting is someone who is both 8 years old and 42 inches tall. Anybody who is 8 will be found on a line directly above 8 years old on the x-axis. Anybody who's 42 inches tall will be found on a line directly to the right of 42 inches on the y-axis. So this person, who is both 8 years old and 42 inches tall, must go where these two lines intersect. To plot this point in real life, draw a faint line extending up from 8 years old. Use a straight edge like a piece of paper to make sure you're drawing it straight and directly up. Then, draw a second line extending out from 42 inches on the y-axis. 42 inches can be found between 40 and 45 inches, a little bit closer to 40. Place a point where these two lines intersect, and then erase the remains of the lines themselves. You follow the same process for the next data points. Our next person is 13 years old and 62 inches tall. You'll use a straight edge to plot your data point directly above where 13 years is on the x-axis and directly to the right of where 62 inches tall is on the y-axis. By continuing this process of moving straight up from the x-axis and straight across from the y-axis and then placing points where those two lines meet, we can plot the rest of the points in our data table. 
By the time we finish placing all of our points and erasing any stray lines we've left behind, what will remain is a scatter plot, a graph capable of showing us the relationship between our two variables.